Okay, so we welcome the Wholesome Dog. We're joined by Rita Hogan, canine herbalist. Um, for tonight, if you could please um, add, put your questions in the chat. Um, and as we go along, I'll feed those questions to Rita. Um, we are recording this for tonight, and so we will be posting it on our YouTube channel in the coming days. So without further ado, Rita, welcome. Hi. Hello. How are you? Uh, <clears> hi, throat> everybody. Throat> you're great now that you're here. So thank you for joining us. I am so welcome. I, I You're so welcome. I'm so glad I'm here. Uh, I love talking about these types of things, as you know, and um, I'm glad to spend some time with everyone. All right. And if you want, while we're getting set it, um, feel free to just put in the chat where you're from, what kind of dogs you have, if this is your first time learning about herbs for your dog, or or perhaps you're um, a current or former student of Rita's. She does teach classes. We'll talk a little bit more about ways that you can learn more from her, including her upcoming book that we're so excited about out later this year. So um, so Rita, tell us all of the things or whatever the things you want to share tonight, because I'm sure you could spend days talking about it, um, about our dogs, their immune and lymphatic system and herbs and how all of these things work, particularly in the fight against cancer. Um, yeah. So for those of that you don't know me, I am uh, a canine herbalist. I'm not the canine herbalist. I'm a canine herbalist. Um, there's other, uh, others of us out there, uh, uh a few trained by me. Um, and, uh, I work out of Olympia, Washington, and I do a lot of formulating and consulting and teaching and writing and a whole bunch of stuff, uh, all to herbs. I've been doing this uh, for over two decades. Uh, it's my passion and I'm happy to sh uh, share it with you. So, uh, I think the theme here is cancer, uh, this month, right? It um, is. And uh, I uh, happen to be a cancer survivor, um, so I can talk firsthand about uh, cancer and um, what it is and, you know, like how you should deal with it in your dogs and more coming up from a preventative mindset uh, versus a reactionary mindset. Um, and one of the ways that we can deal with that is through the lymphatic system. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to give you some herbal tips tonight, but I really would like you to walk away uh, knowing what the lymphatic system is and knowing how it works. Because um, one of the things about the lymphatic system is a lot of people don't even know it exists. They don't know what it is. They don't know how important it is, how uh, it is integral for avoiding cancer. Um, and dealing with cancer and curing cancer. So um, I think that it's a really good subject to talk about tonight. And I'm hoping uh, that I can answer your questions and you'll definitely walk away uh, knowing what it is and how important it is. So let's just start talking about it. I'm going to share my screen for a little while. And, uh, you know, um, Julian, if you have uh, questions, just interrupt me and I'll just stop sharing my screen for a minute and answer questions and Go back, okay? Excellent. So if someone has an, an imperative question, we can we can go there. Um, so I really want you to see what the lymphatic system looks like. Um, and uh, here it is. And so again, a lot of people don't realize that the lymphatic system is here. And one of the most important things is, is these are a bunch of nodes and vessels, right? And then you map over the venous system, which has all your veins and arteries, and then you can map over the nervous system. And our bodies are just filled with all of these little networks of things that come together as one because everything is connected to the body. There are no separate parts. Um, but this particular component is the lymphatic system. And you have these little nodes here, and I will tell you how they work but the lymphatic system goes down into the tail, not to the end, but uh, goes into the tail. And it's pretty much everywhere else you can think of, including uh, the eyes. Um, so one of the things about the lymphatic system is uh, one of my mentors who is uh, named Matthew Wood. He said the most amazing, amazing things to me when I was learning about the lymphatic system. And that is the lymphatic system is the vehicle through which the immune system acts. And if you take that in, 
you know, people are always saying, well, we need to boost the immune system. We need to modulate the immune system. We need to up the immune system. The immune system needs to improve, right? But how do we actually do that? And the immune system is what keeps dogs and people from getting cancer. And if I mention anything about people, I'm applying it to both dogs and people because they're pretty interchangeable in this conversation. Um, the lymphatic system is the vehicle through which the immune system acts. And that's what you kind of need to understand. And some of you may say, me like, what? Like, I didn't even know the lymphatic system was there. I didn't know it was important. Like, what is this? What, what, how does it work? And that's what I really want you to walk away with tonight. Like understanding that this is in the background of your dog and yourself and it needs help. And our lymphatic systems are so stagnant these days because we live such a, we live a more of a sedentary lifestyle. A dog only gets about 15 minutes of exercise here in the United States a day, which is a travesty. Are you, right. That's really, people, that's the statistic. Yes. Minutes? Less than fit, less than 15 oh my minutes God. on average. And some people, because of our hurried, stressful schedules will literally come home from work, let them out in the morning to go pee, come home yeah. from work, let them out before they sit down for dinner. Yeah. And then let them out again when they go to bed yeah. Yeah. and it's a go out, come back in. Oh, it's freezing. Go out, come back in. You know, and a lot of dogs, that's it. Unless they run around the house, you know, little chihuahuas maybe might be able to get their game on around the house if you have a big house, right? Right. Um, but, you know, look at like a Great Dane, a, 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 a Labrador retriever. And there's actually yeah. more larger dogs than there are small dogs in this country. I can't yeah. speak to other places, but um, a lot of people, if you travel outside this, this country, you're going to see dogs get more exercise. Um, and be outside more. But here in the United States, we have a big problem. So um, the lymphatic system really deals with stagnation. And if you look at this slide, right? If you look at, oh, I don't know what I just did. Oh, hold on. If you look at this slide, these are all the things that lymphatic system deals with. And a stagnant, which means a very slow lymphatic system has a tie in with all of these issues. And if you look at them, they're pretty much all the things that our dogs are dealing with. You know, I don't need to, you know, if you wanna take a snapshot of this um, this slide, um, you know, cancer, which we're talking about today, liver enzymes, which can be a component of cancer, anxiety. I, I can tell you whenever someone has cancer or a dog has cancer, there is always an emotional component the nervous system is always at play. And some people can say, well, my dog's not stressed. But my question is, is how stressed are you? Because yeah. our stress is their stress. And their stress may not always be our stress. They may have stress that we don't even know about. Like when their dog's stuck under the, when their ball's stuck under the couch for two days and no one knows, right? They're stressing out about it. But like our hurried lifestyle completely affects and bleeds over into our dogs. So we want to look at that. You know, I had a client this week who has a very, do a dog with like colitis, uh, has a lot of nausea. And I had him a few weeks ago track how his day was mm. compared to the flare-ups of his dog. And they they were one-to-one, -one, completely coincided, you, right? You so know, now he's not his stress. Yeah. And I, I will also testify to that is, um, I, and I tell this to, to folks all the time, like our dogs are some of the biggest empaths out there. Yeah. Um, you know, we already know that they know when we're not feeling well or when we're stressed, but I don't think people often take into consideration that the physical ramifications that our stress has on our dogs. Right. And, and it's not just, the ramification oh they're worried about us like there's it's a whole physiological manifestation right whether it's in the gut or it's in the nervous system or or whatever so thank you and also feel free to repeat yourself because i tell people all the time i say if you you know you have to maintain your own mental health and if you don't do it for yourself you need to do it for your dog right or your cat or absolutely and i think a lot of people just are living too 
much of a stagnant lifestyle because when you get when you have a moment of fight or flight or when you have a moment of high anxiety something happens where you're like oh my god and it can be something really great and it could be something really really terrible that kind of disrupts you yeah if you just sit around the house or lay down or sit on the couch that energy has nowhere to go and so you got to get out move yeah. your body so that the energy can get out or practice, you know, mind body connection, like Qigong or meditation to also calm down that nervous system response. But for our dogs, we really need to get them outside and get them moving. Um, age appropriate exercise, but just breathing fresh air can help a lot. So you'll see that, you know, the lymphatic system ties in with a lot of these uh, uh, issues. And a lot of these issues are immune issues. They are nervous system issues. And again, everything's connected. So the more that you can look at the body as a whole and as an ecosystem, the better you will get at navigating disease in general and chronic to toxicity. So that's just another little view of, uh, of the lymphatic system after we just spoke about like how much it's tied into all of these chronic conditions that we have. And you can, as you can see, it's everywhere. And the, it, the thing is, is it functions as a unit. So, you know, like this vein, this system over here, okay, is not a vessel, is not separate from this over here. It functions as a unit. If it's clogged up in one area, it's going to put pressure on everything else. And again, everything's connected. So um, it's a dual it's a two-way, or I'm sorry, a one-way, two-way system. So it's a one-way dual system. And that means that it, it transports pathogens, okay? But it also is responsible for these ones right here, these fat-soluble vitamins. It's a fat-soluble nutrition-based network, okay? So you, it's how you feed. It is part of how you're going to feed the cells. But these guys right here, speaking of cancer, okay, vitamin A, vitamin D, E, and K. This little guy right here, vitamin D and vitamin K, I guarantee you, if you have a dog with cancer, they will be low in vitamin D. When I had cancer, my vitamin D levels were 18%. Well, and, and Rita, aren't many, <clears throat> most dogs, I'm going to go out and let them say most, and it doesn't matter if they're they're almost all all kibble fed dogs are likely <clears throat> deficient in vitamin D, but also a good number of um raw fed dogs as well. Like if it's if you're not actively maintaining a fresh source that's you know um like a cod liver oil or something like that, aren't many dogs under or like deficient in vitamin D just yes to begin with they, yeah. are, they absolutely are and stress will bring down vitamin d and the stagnant lymphatic system is a huge reason for low vitamin d levels because it's not it doesn't just because you put something in a dog's mouth does not mean it gets absorbed right that's what people need to understand like it just doesn't get absorbed if you have a stagnant lymphatic system it's going to be a lot lower and we need these macro vitamins in our dog's life. Now, I always recommend people get their dog tested before they start giving certain vitamins and you want to give vitamin D with a fat, but right. um, because it's fat soluble. Um, and then it's also responsible for fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are not going to be absorbed uh, if you're and transported to the cells where they need to go if the, the lymphatic system is stagnant. And then you look at all the other things. It is responsible for destroying viruses, bacteria, pathogens, okay? And it's, again, it is a system of vessels with nodes. And I'll talk about these nodes in a minute, but uh, vessels with nodes, that's really just important to keep in there. And it interacts with the liver, the kidneys, the urinary system, the large intestine, and the stool. Like, and it goes, obviously, as you see from the, the photo that I shared, it goes everywhere. So, um, the lymphatic system is a huge part of the immune system. And it's not just those nodes and vessels because it interacts what, what is called lymphatic organs. And I'll talk about those briefly. Um, and it also interacts with the circulatory system, the heart system, the, ve the veins and arteries, 
and the nervous system. So when we put everything together, we have almost every system, well, basically every system inside your dog's body has a lymphatic component. Um, and the lymphatic, lymphatic system will clean the immune system. It's going to strengthen it. It offers nutrition and cleansing to every cell in the body. Well, almost every cell. And it's responsible for removing waste. And cancer is toxicity. It is physical tox toxicity and emotional toxicity. Um, and for me, the emotional component is not separate from the physical component. I was just writing something for my course today and I was mentioning that, you know, when you have, I was discussing do dogs as an ecosystem and that concept. And mm -hmm. it's really how I kind of drive things for my practice. And, you know, as a person, if someone, if you're having a hard time mentally, if you're having some mental anguish, some depression, um, anxiety, things like that, uh, people send you to a psychiatrist or a therapist. And mm -hmm. as much as that's going to help you to kind of to release certain emotions, a lot of that is driven nutritionally. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a real failure to what is happening in this country. And I'm going to be doing a, a anxiety workshop and um, it's pretty interesting, the nutritional uh, component to anxiety and also the microbiome and different toxins in our environment that increase histamine uh, almost 80% that a lot of people don't even know that they're interacting with. So um, the lymphatic system, again, is responsible for removing a lot of those toxins. Um, so how do you know if your dog has signs of lymphatic congestion? Cancer is a big one. Um, early aging. If you look at the onset of early aging in dogs right now and them showing signs of congestion, um, it's rampant. And then, so like early graying is definitely a sign of lymphatic uh, congestion and also nutritional deficiencies and stress. Um, parasitic infections, you know, you can look at the list here, dementia, lipoma, itching, arthritis, obesity, stiffness, food sensitivities, Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is really tied in with lymphatic stagnation. Um, there, high liver enzymes, you know, so many things that our dogs, again, are dealing with. And it's, everything is connected. So we always have to think about the lymphatic system and what it's doing. And again, this is what should be sh being, being shouted from the rooftops. And it's not, no one's even talking about it. So, and I know when I learned about the lymphatic system from my teachers, um, it was one of those components that just blew up my practice. Like, oh my God. Um, and working with the lymphatics before you start detoxing, you know, you'll see people with like detox, 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 detox. Well, one of the problems with detoxing and one of the questions I get from a lot of raw feeders is my dog's raw fed. I don't understand why he's getting lipomas. Yeah. Um, one is that he's too damp. Number two, there's stagnation. <laughs> And number three, we're not working with the dog's lymphatics. And a lot of times these dogs don't get a lot of exercise. They might be fed the best food on the planet, but they're not getting fresh air. They're not getting exercise. They're not getting mental stimulation. And a lot of them are high anxiety. So um, we really want to come together and get that mentality that the lymphatics are always at play and we can't detox the body until we get these lymphatics moving because it will trap, it will trap toxins in the body. And the body is beautiful in that it forms a tumor to help save your life and wall off toxins because the liver can't handle it. The liver cannot handle it. And when you have a stagnant lymphatic system, you have a high probability for a stagnant liver. Um, here's a few more things, you know, and it's sebaceous cysts, warts, skin, lung congestion, greasy skin leaky gut, acid reflux, trouble digesting fats. You get fats in the stool and yeast overgrowth, which is a huge problem for a lot of dogs. Um, another little view of the lymphatic system, just to, after that type of conversation. As you can see, it kind of starts taking on a different meaning, right? When you hear about these types of things with the lymphatic system. Now where it's not just a whole bunch of goobly gob all over your dog, it's starting to mean something more. And notice how far reaching it is. 
Um, okay, so again, it's not just a bunch of vessels and and vessels and nodes. These are the lymphatic organs. We have the spleen. And today I was talking to a client who wanted to know if she should remove her dog's spleen because her vet told her, wait for it. Oh no. That the spleen had no use. What? <laughs> yes, it's true. The spleen had no use. The spleen, you don't need a spleen. The, the statement should be, you can survive without a spleen, but yeah. can you thrive? Yeah. And the answer is no. The spleen yeah. is a huge lymphatic organ. Okay. The, it's a huge lymphatic organ. So this directs, directly interacts with the lymphatic system. Okay. Then we have the thymus gland. The thymus gland, um, I don't know if you guys know who uh, Dr. PJ Broadfoot is. Yes. But he well, is a pioneer in the holistic veterinary industry. She is so good <laughs> at cancer. Uh, she's very good at healing cancer. And one of the things that she supplements in a lot of cancer cases is thymus gland, uh, powdered thymus, uh, thymus extract, different uh, derivatives of thymus. And the thymus gland takes on fat as dogs age and as we age. And so it gets congested and having a good lymphatic system can help decongest this organ and make it work better. And this is definitely an anti-cancer organ. And then we have the tonsils and adenoids. And yes, dogs have tonsils and adenoids and they are a part of the immune system. I know that when I was a kid, they used to take out tonsils like crazy. Um, I think they still do it. And uh, the answer is don't do it. Heal your tonsils. They are part of your immune system. And if you don't have tonsils, know that your immune system needs a lot more support if you don't have tonsils. Rita, I have a question. Um, so in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, there's one of the most familiar sayings that we hear all the time is feed like with like, right? So do you um, do you recommend feeding thymus gland to dogs who are struggling with uh, lymphatic issues and or cancer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course, it's not going to it's not going to resonate for every dog. No. Uh, but yes, I definitely do. I definitely do. OK, that's good. Um, to know. Yeah. Um, and then bone marrow. The lymphatic system is directly related to bone marrow because it, it, it contains bone marrow cells. Um, and then pyre patches, pyre patches. A lot of people, if we could ask anyone, does anyone know what a pyre patch is? Um, I don't <laughs> most likely would be no. And pyre patches are lymphatic organs inside the digestive system that are responsible for, uh, so many things in the lymphatic system and in your digestive system and your dog's digestive system, and they need to be cleansed. And they are a huge part of lymphatic movement. Um, these little guys do so much. And again, they're the unspoken heroes, but are, I love them. And I've, I have fallen in love with Pyrus patches. Are they, um, are they found mostly in the um, large intestine or the colon or are they in small? small intestine. Lar I'm sorry, small, small, small. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Haley says she's a nurse and she's never even heard of Pyre's Patches. So I feel a little bit better. Thank you, Haley. That does not <laughs> surprise me, Haley. That does not surprise me, but look them up. They're lovely little creatures. Okay. So um, here's a little, uh, a little, just a little rundown. You have stem cells in the red bone marrow. Okay. And they give you these lymphocyte. These lymphocytes are cells in the lymphatic system. Precursors. You need the red bone marrow. Okay. So the lymphocytes, and they're called B cells, which mean basically bone marrow cells, okay? They travel to the lymph node and they help kill things. And T cells are thymus cells, okay? So thymus cells go into the lymph node. So bone marrow and thymus, and those make up part of your immune system. How many people have heard about bone marrow transplants for cancer, certain cancer people, Sure. right? Um, that's why, because they have the powerful cells and it helps work with your lymphatic system. Okay. So both T cells, thymus cells, and bone marrow cells are transported to the blood, to the lymphatic system. Okay. Through these organs. We love them. And that includes our spleen. Um, here's a little kind of view of what happens. Okay. 
So the, remember I said it's a one-way system and there's a bunch of, like, if you pictured all of the little cells in the body are all around here, right? And the lymphatic system has these little capillaries that it sits inside what's called the matrix, which is like the interstitial fluid. It's the fluid between the cells, okay? It has, you have a cell and then you have fluid around it. And that fluid has to be cleaned. If it's not cleaned, you or your dog will die, okay? So we have these little lymphatic capillaries and it brings it through, see right here, this is the liquid, it's called the lymph fluid, brings it up through and around through these little nodes. And the nodes are kind of like if you were on a highway and you see those truck stops where the trucks have to go and you see like cop cars and stuff. And the way stations. The state, yeah. state police checking to see if yeah. the weight is off or if they have anything bad in their trucks, things like that. That's basically what the nodes are doing. They're going, okay, what viruses and pathogens are in this liquid that I need to destroy? And that's what the lymph nodes do. And stagnant lymphatics can transport cancer. And the lymph nodes, when they get super stagnant and sick, they don't destroy cancer like they should. And that's where you get mystasis. So we want a clean lymphatic system. And then eventually they empty into the pulmonary system, the heart system, and the lungs. So, uh, and then it just gets recirculated and it happens all over again. So basically, um, the blood circulation in plasma, it it empties into there as well. I don't want to get into all of like, there's some really great videos on how the lymphatic system, like where they'll show you exactly how it works. But because of time, I'm going to kind of like skip over that. But basically what you really need to know is that it cleans the blood. It clean, it helps clean the blood. It cleans the lymph, the lymph, which is part of that liquid that surrounds the cells. And it helps destroy pathogens and it feeds the entire system of your dog along with what's called the portal vein. And the portal vein is like a telephone line between the liver and the liver system and your dog's small intestine. And it's how the blood, the blood, that portal vein is also a dual system. It It's blood waste and blood nutrition. And then this one is fat waste and fat nutrition. Okay. That's basically how the body cleans everything. So um, that's the inside of a lymph node. Things come in here and the fluid is circulated around here and we have those T cells and B cells and antibodies to pathogens and it kills things. And then it sends that liquid to the next node. And some of that liquid veers off to where it needs to go. Um, I discussed the spleen. It's the largest node. It's the largest lymph node. It controls blood in the circulation. That white pulp right here, this is all lymph tissue. So when someone says that the spleen doesn't do anything, it's not true. Um, and it removes faulty red blood cells and pathogens from the blood. So when a dog has their spleen removed, they have a much higher risk of getting cancer. Mm -hmm. And it also helps the liver and gallbladder and pancreas support digestion. <clears throat> so it is very integral into having a healthy system. So a question on that, Rita, we had, um, uh, was from, I believe Haley, or sorry, it was, no, it was from Wendy. Uh, the question was, when you surgically alter the lymph, I think the lymph system. The yeah, lymph when the nodes are removed. Yeah. How does, does the lymph system heal itself, like finding a workaround? And also with that, how do you eliminate that stagnation in lymph nodes? Well, I'm going to talk about that later, about eliminating Great. stagnation. Okay. But um, it depends on how many nodes you have left. You, you need your nodes. You know, modern, I didn't. I I don't think that I had any lymph nodes removed when I had cancer surgery. Um, no, I don't think so. But um, when they remove a bunch of lymph nodes, like from your armpit or uh, like with breast cancer, they move a bunch of lymph nodes here. It depends on how many, mm -hmm. um, but you need, you're still going to have to work harder at lymphatic stagnation when you have any nodes removed. 
Remember, it works as a, a unit. The beautiful thing about the body is that it does compensate, but it also puts pressure on other systems. So um, you just have to, you're going to have to use things. You kind of can't use things to help stimulate it and instead of kind of left to your own devices, you know. Got it. And my biggest thing is definitely getting in a preventative mindset and um, don't ever believe, you know, well, it won't happen to me. That definitely was my belief, even though I was not taking care of myself and I was stressed out of my mind when I got cancer. Um, but uh, you definitely want to get in a preventative mindset. You don't have to live in fear. That's not right. what I'm saying. But right. you definitely need to take action. And if you really, later on, a, a couple of years from now, I'm I'm going to be putting out a book called The Seasonal Dog. And it it literally is about living in the seasons, working with the seasons to help prevent disease. It's a wonderful way to not be stressed about things, yeah. but um, that's another conversation. Um, Pyre's patches, just, you know, if you want to take a picture of this, of this uh, slide, I don't know how to move it over. I don't know if everyone can see these videos. I can, but, uh, but, you know, they help transport nutrients. They absorb fats. They're full of nerves and hormones. Hormones are big. Um, they protect the mucosa and the beneficial bacteria. They are in the, uh, I'm sorry, they're in the small intestine and large intestine. I apologize. They are in the long intestine. Uh, they first, uh, they are the first defense against the microbial attack. Mm. Okay. And your stomach is the first defense against pathogens in general. And they help protect against leaky gut, which is super important. So again, taking a look just so you don't forget. There it is in all of its beauty. Um, and that it is the vehicle through which the, the immune system acts. And that's how it does act because that is all part of the immune system. Those B and T cells moving throughout the lymphatic system are so important. Plus it's a dual system. So you have all of that nutrition. So you want every health, health is a hundred percent assimilation and elimination. When we are not assimilating correctly, we are not eliminating correctly. And if we we can put everything in the mouth, but it doesn't mean that it's assimilating. And we definitely want good elimination. We want our elimination organs working very, you know, well. Like dogs should poop more than once a day. People should definitely poop more than once a day. Uh, if you are not doing that or your dog's not doing that, you are stagnant. There is something wrong in your system. And a lot of people, I literally had a house guest whom I love, uh, I know I do not open my mouth unless I am asked. So I learned that. Uh, I learned that cancer taught me that to shut up. Um, uh, definitely because I used to get stressed about people. Now I just don't stress at all. But if someone asks, I will open my mouth, but I will not open it. Walking through the kitchen, I'm just going to do an impression. If she knew I was doing an impression, she'll never see this. But if she knew it, she would love me still. But she walks through the kitchen. She's like, hey. yeah, I only poop once every four days. It's just who I am. Oh, and, oh, my God. And I thought, she goes, yeah, you know, it's just normal for me. And in my head, I was thinking, not normal. No. Not normal. No. But there are a lot of people that feel that is normal because that's always, that's kind of always how they've been. And Ugh. it's not normal. No. So it's not normal. And, um, and the immune system acts through the lymphatic system. And that's what we re really need to take away is you kind of see how it works. Yeah. You see that it's everywhere and it's fat soluble nutrition and pathogens. Okay. Okay. So keeping a healthy lymphatic lifestyle. And for me, one of my taglines, if you don't know who, if you haven't followed me before or anything is a healthy dog is a way of life. It's not a one-off. It's not you, the, the issue with that. And it's, it's for us as well. The issue is that you can get yourself super healthy and then just stop doing any kind of maintenance. And it just starts plummeting. Um, and we live in a very, uh, I, we live in a very stagnant environment. We have a lot of pollution. We have a lot of environmental stressors. Um, it is not the, environment of like of my mom my mom's 93 um you know she talks about what life was like yeah there was a lot of problems in the united states back then you know maybe social issues but it was a much cleaner environment um 
and you didn't, when you were go, went outside in the country, you didn't breathe in toxins immediately. You didn't have to worry about in the country. You didn't have to worry about glyphosate. You know, you right. didn't have to worry about yep. the air being polluted wherever you are. So now yeah. more than ever, we have to take care of our lungs and our livers and modern medicine can really help keeps us, keep us alive. And I love modern medicine. They've saved my life a couple times. However, they know hardly anything about prevention and thriving. You know, it's more than just being Correct. alive. You want to thrive. You know, like you think about Correct. people from the ages of 70 to 90, you know, you can limp on for years and years suffering, <laughs> right? And we don't want to suffer. We want to thrive, you know, until we keel over. Right. That, that's what I want to do. I just want to be walking along some street someday, laughing and giggling, and, ah, and I'm done. You know, I want to go out feeling <laughs> yeah. strong yep. and thrive. So here are a few things that yeah. are negative and positive. Wi-Fi and devices. You know, if you are sleeping with your Wi-Fi on, turn it off. Oh, but Rita, we have a Nest and we have a, a Wi-Fi based security system. Get a deadbolt and call it done. Go back. Uh, smart houses are sick houses. Uh, smart houses are not smart. Yeah. They're dumb. Uh, and they fall into the category of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, they have they have not been tested on anything and they cause stress. Stress. Um, yeah. So turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Turn it off when you leave the house. Your dogs don't need Wi-Fi. Your cats don't need Wi-Fi. Um, it will help their stress and will help you <laughs> turn your cell phones off at night. Oh my God, I have to keep it on because uh, someone might call me. My mom will tell you she's 93. She lived, I don't even know, like 60, but 70 years without a cell phone and she did okay. And if you really want that, get a landline and forward your cell phone to your landline while you sleep. Landlines are super cheap um, and they actually still do exist. And a lot of people are going back to landlines just to do to do that, to not have their cell phones on in their house. Um, it's going to lower your stress. Uh, fresh air. Ding, ding. Number one, your air outside is better than your air inside. Save up your money um, and get some good quality air filters. I love the Air Doctor air filters. They work really well. Um, yeah. Massage, chiropractic, uh, any type of movement, massaging. Um, I can tell you that this were, uh, this book is worth its weight in gold. It is Four Paws, Five Directions by Cheryl Swartz. Everyone should have a copy. It changed my life like over 20 years ago. Um, I've had it for over 20 years. It's, I kiss it, I love it. One thing in here is she has these wonderful pictures of the acupressure points. I am not a TCM herbalist, but I do use acupressure. Um, she has these great diagrams of how to stimulate your dog's lymphatic system and their body. And this is amazing. And you can do massage. Um, massage is wonderful for getting the lymphatic system to move. So uh, we'll, we'll just put that back later. Um, acupuncture, exercise. And I just put a link to the book. Yeah. Hi, you know, sorry. sorry make sure that if you're feeding kibble, Make sure your dog is getting lots of hydration. Uh, make sure that if you're feeding freeze-dried or dehydrated, that you fully hydrate that food before you feed it. Or if your dog won't eat it with hydration, that you get hydration in their, their body through bone broth or a nice type of broth or a mushroom broth, something that they will eat and drink so that they get hydration. Um, and I have to say it, if you're feeding your cat kibble, stop. Mm. Especially uh, cats. You know, more Rita, important than feeding your cat your dog kibble. If you feed your your cat kibble, kills the kidneys in cats. So, um, and they cats are really it's really hard for cats to get hydration through water. So, yeah. um, they usually get it through blood, and they're obligate carnivores. So it's super important for kitties. Um, and I ha happen to have two lovely kitties that I love so much. I'm a dog person who loves a cat. I'm not a cat person who loves dogs. I'm a dog person who loves cats. Um, heavy metals are really hard. Get your dog tested for heavy metals. Uh, 
I'm going to be having some testing on my website when I get back from Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm super excited about it to start testing for heavy metals through saliva and hair. Um, air pollution. I'm talking about inside the house. Mm. Uh, get some air filters going. Uh, Rodney Habib, uh, I heard him speak last year at the Feed Real Summit, and he gave a great, um, he gave a great, like, if you can't afford a good air filter, a cheap air filter, he said that a scientist told him to take a charcoal filter, a, a big charcoal, like a square filter, and attach it, tape it to a box fan, and turn it on. <clears throat> you know, it, he just... He and Karen, Dr. Becker, just uh, posted a thing over the last like two or three days. Uh, they just posted a video on the Forever Dog uh, Facebook group and the or the their page and the Instagram, and they actually showed people how to do it. Oh well, excellent. Yes, excellent. Yep. You know, I can't get to the uh, the that group on Sundays very often, but I I am a member of the Inside Scoop. I don't get there very often, but I'm a member, and it's it. From anything that I I went on there to look at, it was it's it's worth its ten weight in gold. It's ten dollars a month. Yeah, um, love it. Um, okay, so uh, another thing: make sure that your dog has trace minerals. Very important for kidney and lymphatic function, and zinc is very very important. Um, so you don't want to overdo it, but a lot of dogs are low in trace minerals, even raw fed dogs, because our soils are depleted. So, um, uh, a good trace, you can take Himalayan salt, add just a size appropriate pinch. Okay. Size appropriate pinch onto the food once a day adds a, a good amount of trace minerals. Um, you can also use humic or fulvic acid. Fulvic acid has humic acid in it. So you can just use fulvic acid if you want, yeah. um, or something like ion, ion, uh, bio. I was just going to say ion gut health. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of dogs that I work with have some problems with that. Um, really I sell it in my store, but yeah, it can, it can, that one can be pretty harsh. I think it might be because they dilute it down so much. It's, you know, it, it's in those big, I mean, it, they take it and they add a lot of, um, hydration to it. Um, yeah, okay. that may be the issue. I'm not positive, but, uh, yeah, Interesting. but it, it does work for a lot of dogs. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things and then we'll take questions. Um, so I work on a system of energetics. That's a different conversation, um, but uh, it's good to know if your dog is warm or hot or cold, or like warm or cool. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've, I'll tell you about a course later, um, but it's very, very, this is the key to using herbs uh, correctly. Um, so, but if you don't know if your dog's warm or cool, pick the, just assume that they're cool. Okay. Uh, assume that they're cool and, um, and use that. But here's the two things. So there's two herbs that I use to get the lymphatics going. And I use these herbs usually before I start other herbs. Um, if you're on other herbs now, you can add them to there and, uh, use it, um, but like if I'm starting a protocol for someone, I usually give them some type of lymphatic herb in their protocol to start first to get things moving if I see that it it warrants it, uh, warrants moving it, um, like starting right away, especially if they're detoxifying, especially if they're adding, they're eating a lot of detoxifying things. Uh, the first one is cleavers. So cleavers is cooling. It's for dogs who are warm. And it's my number one lymphatic for warm dogs. It helps the kidney, spleen, and liver. It nourishes, cleanses, clears out the lymphatic system. It has a liver skin connection. That means if there's skin issues in the dog, uh, it's well indicated there. It increases elimination. It's a diuretic, so your dog may pee a little more. Um, and you don't need a lot. So you can use a glycerate or you could use an alcohol tincture. These are one drop dose per five pounds. You do not need to worry about the alcohol in a tincture at this type of dosage, unless your dog has histamine intolerance or diabetes. Okay. Those are two things that I do not give alcoholic tinctures for. Alcohol messes with dogs with, with histamine intolerance. And um, also it's, it's not good for diabetes. So yeah. uh, glycerates, 
are fine for this herb. It's nice. It has a lot of moisture, so a glycerate will work. Three drops per five pounds. You can take a picture of that slide, a screenshot. Um, and then this is my, again, my cool, my warm dog, uh, it's cooling uh, lymphatic. And I keep dogs on this for long periods of time, unless they get dry. If they start show signs of dryness, you're going to have to add something or just give it a break for a while. Usually at that type of dosage, you don't get a lot of dryness. Mm. Um, what time is it right now, hon? We are good. It's uh, it's 10 minutes to eight. Or okay, I want to have a question. So yeah, um, you're good. You're good. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to this one. So this is my number one lymphatic for dogs that are cool. And like I said, if you don't know if your dog is cool or warm, take my energetics course. But if you can't do that, then pick this one. Um, calendula has so many wonderful uses, but mostly um, cool dogs have more pathogenic overgrowth. They have more yeast overgrowth. Um, they have more things that are from, they have more stagnation in general. Uh, warm dogs are more hyper. Um, they're more in your face. They're busy, 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 busy. Uh, cool dogs are much more chill. They love to be bundled up. They are much more, I would say, lethargic in nature. Uh, much more kind of dude dogs. Like, hey, what's up? I'm not like hyper spaz. So um, that predisposes uh, cool dogs to pathogenic overgrowth and yeast growth and yeast issues. So this is my number one. It's an antifungal. It supports yeah. the liver. It's a bacteriostatic, which means that it doesn't kill bacteria. It keeps bacteria, pathogenic bacteria from having a party. And we don't, you know, it's like frat boys. They're fine individually, but when they get together, they're rotten. Okay. So I keep looking over at these videos. I'm supposed to look here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're um, fine. And I love um, your analogies. I keep looking over at you guys, but I, I got to look at you guys. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, but that's a bacteriostatic. You know, frat boys are great by themselves out to lunch on a Sunday afternoon. But when they get together with their friends, they cause a lot of problems. And that is pathogenic bacteria. And this calendula doesn't allow them to get together. So it keeps <laughs> them in their own corners. Um, and we love that about this herb. It's bitter, so it helps with digestive juices. It helps with assimilating nutrients and it gets the lymphatic system moving. Um, it's lovely. And again, it's the same dosage. Um, it's one drop per five pounds, very low dose. Um, for me, I have a very simple way of dosing this one. It has to have, you have to have an, al uh, alcoholic tincture. So it's too resinous. You can mm -hmm. find, you can find a glycerate tincture but you want to make sure that who's ever making that glycerate used alcohol first. Otherwise you're mm. wasting your money. There are some people that can, uh, it usually it's kind of big manufacturing. They can do an alcoholic tincture first and then get rid of the alcohol and preserve it with glycerin. But it has to be, it has to be taken with, it has to be um, macerated with alcohol first because it has a lot of resin if you touch the underbelly yeah. of a calendula flower you're getting your hands are going to get sticky yeah and glycerin will not extract that so um but i usually do like a chihuahua sized dog i uh, i do like maybe if it's under five pounds i'll do i'll dilute a drop i'll take like 15 mils i'll put a drop in and then i'll give a dropper of of that liquid of that water. Um, and then like a pug, I do one to two drops, a uh, spaniel, that's a medium dog, like Corgi, I'll do two to three drops. And then a big dog, like a golden retriever, three to four drops. And then a big, big dog, five drops. And I usually, that usually is fine long-term. Do you but if we have, but if we have a, like a cancer, you're going to need a lot more. Yeah. Are, what are your thoughts on pulsing Rita? Uh, pulsing is very herb specific, but okay. um, uh, pulsing is fairly good for things that are much more diuretic okay. um, or uh, things like Oregon grape. Um, but if I find people on herbs way too long, yeah, so that uh, my book will help deal with that or my course. But um, 
they're on herbs way too long and you should pulse. Uh, it's like a, um, the six ratio is um, five days on, one day off, or five days on, two days off. It just depends on what you want to do. Um, then you do like three months on, one month off. It There's a whole bunch of different pulsing schedules. Yeah. Okay. Um, it depends on what you're doing, giving the herb for. Uh, yeah. There's no pulsing when it comes to cancer. Right. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> you can do herbs for a certain period of time and then stop them for a little while to give the, the liver a break and then do it again if it's something like Oregon grape or golden seal or yeah. something really high in alkaloids. Okay. Um, just as a follow-up question, Annie was wondering, is there a benefit to providing um, these as dried herbs versus tincture or making a tea? Hold on. I don't know. Uh, am I there? Can you see? Yes. Me? You're still here. Um, okay. So uh, the, the dried herbs can give benefit, but they don't do as well because you have to assimilate them. They have to be digested. They're seen as a food. So they have to be digested by the gut. So you got to remember if you have a stagnant lymph system, the assimilation is going to be pretty low. So you want to use a liquid extract that goes right into the blood in the mouth. Um, you could drip it on a, like a little treat, or you could put it in just a tiny itsy bitsy broth if you want. But for me, I put it in the mouth. I, I will dilute for taste. I taste all my dog's herbs. Like I, I taste them to see how, how, Roots usually taste pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, I'll taste them, but I'll put them in water and then I'll syringe them in the mouth. And the biggest thing giving a dog a tincture is don't come straight at them. That's very threatening to a dog. I don't care how much they are your baby. It's <laughs> dog language. Just don't yeah. come straight at them, coming at them. Here, take it to, you know, here, take it. Come around them. If they are a little dog, I usually put them on the counter. I put them on the counter and I gently hold them between my 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 forearm and my chest and I squeeze just a little and I'll come from the side and put it in the side pocket yep right or I'll have someone help me but usually medium to, even my pug my my not my little pug but my kind of normal 20 pound pug yeah I will put them between my ankles gently squeeze then I will take my hand and I will cup his mouth like this just kind of hold it just support it not squeeze mm -hmm. just support it Mm -hmm. And pew, from behind, mm -hmm. from behind, it's not as threatening. And yeah. the gentle squeezing, like my big dog, my big dog, Gertie, she's 65 pounds. I straddle her with my thighs and I gently squeeze and I cup her mouth and I put it in the side pocket. But when I come at her, when I come at her directly, she's out. She's right. gone. Right. I don't, don't, what is she doing? You know, Do she's you, threatening me. So Do you also use the same delivery for... I know we haven't gotten into it for this, but I know you're very familiar with flower essences and, and when you're incorporating flower essences, you know, do you approach the dog with the flower essence in the same manner? Yes, I do. Um, otherwise, if there's like, if they're super, super sensitive dogs, I might start out with a flower essence, like in the ear, um, on the tips of the ear yeah. or right inside here. Um, yeah. uh, or maybe between the toes. Um, but usually I put it in the mouth or, um, I might mix it with a tincture, but yeah, yeah I, I don't ever come straight on at a dog. Uh, no. I used to do dog behavior for a long time, uh, when I boarded dogs and, um, it's very threatening to them. Yeah, so. that's helpful. Um, can we take a couple questions? Yeah. Okay. So Annie is asking, um, in terms of the abstaining, um, on certain protocols for dogs who are either diabetic or have a histamine um, intolerance, does that also include those dogs with mast cell um, tumors? Not necessarily, no, no. Um, you will know if a dog cannot handle uh, the um, alcohol. And I will tell you right now, if you're concerned about alcohol, you can give your dog a powdered milk thistle while they're on an alcoholic tincture if you're worried about it. The dosages that I suggest are, there's more alcohol in a ripe banana, like a, <laughs> a ripe banana. I mean, there is, but um, I'm not worried about it. But okay. if you are concerned about it, one, you don't have to use it, but B, two, just give milk thistle. It helps uh, keep the uh, the liver from the alcohol effects. Um, 
And um, if a dog is histamine intolerant and has a problem, they will start itching or their ears will get super red for an extended period of time. Um, and if you have a, if you have a medicine that is like you think will be really high benefit, you can also give it with a dosage of histaminium. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't do well with alcohol. I have some histamine, histamine issues. Um, I take alcoholic tinctures every day, but I take them with a dose of histaminium before. And then I take a dose of them about five minutes after I take two balls of homeopathic histaminium 30 C or 12 C and it helps me immensely. I have no reaction to alcohol when I take histaminium. Um, and because I'm taking real, like I'm just taking drop dosages. So yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't drink, drink. Uh, like yeah. I'm not going to like do a shot. That's not going to happen. Um, but uh, for my drop dosing or any tincture that I use, I use histaminium and it helps with the histamine response. I, uh, with mast cell uh, tumors, um, there's a couple of tinctures that work really well for those. Uh, but I usually give them with histaminium or I'd see how the dog reacts to them. Uh, histamine, histamine intolerance is not necessarily mast cell tumor. Uh, okay. Patient. A couple other questions. Um, Haley has a question about a Chinese um, herb, uh, the one that I'm familiar with, Long Dan, uh, I believe it's Zigan. So I, I know long, I, my dog's been on long Dan Ergon and so forth. Anyway, you, you'd have to give me the, you'd have to get, give me the non-Chinese name, the common name. I might know it. Haley, if you're able to do a Google search, <laughs> let me know. But the question is, she says the Chinese herbal is a powder. If my vet doesn't have the tincture option, can I purchase it somewhere myself? Or do these herbs require prescription? I think I know the answer, but Rita, do you want to? You can give them the herb. Sure. Yeah. We're talking about the lymphatic system. I don't know what that herb is. Um, yeah. You can give them the herb, but if you're trying to stimulate the lymphatics, and that's the subject, if you're right. trying to stimulate the lymphatics, um, I would use a tincture. Now, are, am I saying that you get no benefit from a powder? No, I'm not. Um, but if you want a good benefit, a strong benefit, um, I would use a extract. And like I said, you know, you can use a glycerin extract uh, if you want. Um, I don't find it as effective for calendula at all, but mm -hmm. um, there's other there's other lymphatic stimulants, you know, even herbs like hawthorn um, yeah. is a lymphatic stimulant. Uh, prickly ash is a lymphatic stimulant. Red root is a lymphatic stimulant. Burdock root stimulates the lymphatics as well. Um, there's a phytoembryonic therapy, which is a plant stem cell that I love for lymphatics. It's called sweet chestnut. And you hardly need any of that. The dosage for like a big, big dog is less than five drops. Wow. So, um, it, it, uh, it just depends on what lymphatic, the two that I use the most of is the cleavers and the calendula. Awesome. Lisa asks, um, it was recommended to me by an herbalist to add boiling water to a tincture to evaporate the alcohol. Would you recommend this? Yeah, I was going to say, if not you're to, boiling it. Not or... to add the boiling water to the tincture, yeah. but you can take a tincture bottle, put it in something with Pyrex, and you can put the hot water around it and let it sit. Mm. There's ways to boil off the alcohol for sure. Um, uh, Th and that's one of them. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And you, and it will evaporate with the heat, but you don't put the tea, you don't put the water in the tincture. Well, I mean, right. and again, again, as an herbalist, I can tell you, and as an herbalist, I've been an herbalist for a long time is there's different ways of practicing. Sure. So sure. that's the way that I practice. Sure. Um, another question. Um, a dog will just not take anything with milk thistle, just like refuses, smells milk thistle and runs the other direction. Um, if you're trying to detoxify, don't what use are, thistle. right, obviously, because listen yeah. to the dog, right? Treat the dog in front of you. Yeah. What other general detoxifying herbs would you recommend? Uh, one, I would start moving the lymphatic system. Um, but, uh, I mean, 
oh my god there's so many dandelion uh there's dandelion root there's burdock root there's artichoke there's uh caraway there's a whole bunch of phytoembryonics that detox the, by the liver yeah. uh there's uh white birch which works really well as a phytoembryonic that's a stem cell tincture i saw those on my website juniper which it detoxifies the liver and the kidneys there's blessed thistle um instead of milk thistle uh there's just so many well and, and so like water extracts of certain things like adored beast has chelidonium and barberry you wouldn't want to use those as alcoholic tinctures because they're really high in alkaloids and they're not for alcoholic tinctures in dogs uh but they use a water extraction of barberry and chelidonium those are very good safe uh alcohol uh water does not like alkaloids so alcohol loves alkaloids but a water extraction is not going to give you those alkaloids um mm -hmm. so that one's a good one too um uh there's just so many yeah um okay i'm gonna share my now because i would love for you we've gotten some questions including where do you get your tinctures from Rita. So here's the time to talk about your website and your shop and stuff like that. So. Oh, uh, okay. Feel free. Well, um, well, that's my website. Uh, that's <laughs> my consulting website and, uh, my store. Um, I have a shop and, uh, yeah, there it is. It's not the best shop in the world. I'm working on getting a search button because I can't have a search button, but, um, at all my tinctures are there under tinctures and phytoembryonics. Uh, towards the end of the year, I'll have a lot more glycerates. I'm still looking for a good glycerate maker. I make some of them, but I, I want to make them alcoholic and then get rid of the alcohol, uh, and glycerin. preserve them in glycerin when they are indicated, uh, yeah. to make it in alcohol versus glycerin. But, um, uh, that's for consulting and my store. Yep. Um, and then I also have a service called ask the herbalist on there, um, and that is, uh, it's under consulting, I think. Um, ask the herbalist. That is a question. You can ask me a single question, two questions, or three questions if you uh, need to get a hold of me um, right away. And then I have another website called canineherbalism.com. Look at you. I love this. This is so fun. Herbalism.com. See, you can tell I've been to your website before. <laughs> Look at that. So that is my uh, courses and my community. So I have a dog or individuals community. It's $10 a month and you can ask me anything. You can ask me anything dog related, human related. It really is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, it's cheaper than ask the herbalist and you can quit at any time and then you can rejoin anytime. I don't care. Um, is this, and is this Jacqueline from functional canine? This quote? It's J Jacqueline Ziahara. Yeah. She runs yeah. the functional canine. She's fabulous. I don't know what, if she runs that, I have no idea. Oh, well she's okay. She's I, in Australia, but yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and, um, and we also do trainings on the dogs or individuals community. Um, I do trainings and live Q and a every month. Um, and then you also get a discount. So that pays for the membership. And then, um, on my store, and then I have uh, my canine energetics course. And is that I, back on your other website? No, it's on there. Oh, okay. It's down there. It, there it is, canine energetics. And then I have my upcoming um, level one canine, holistic canine herbalism course, level one. That uh, comes out March 1st. And then I have a podcast that's free. Yeah. And super fun. It, I have a episode that comes out every week and uh, that's a, a lot of fun. I love that. And then um, I have canine phytoembryonic therapy that's using stem cells for disease. And that one is open right now. And then um, I have an upcoming dental course that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that I'm okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out more about that. Um, well, the other thing I wanted to share is you announced, I think either earlier this week or last week that your book is coming out later this year. It is. It's coming out in October, November, or December. I don't know which one, uh, when my publisher is trying to get it together, uh, 
Uh, they've been running way behind, but I'm finally on the schedule. So I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, this will help people so much. <laughs> That's It's not a grab and go. Um, part of it is a grab and go. And part of it is learning um, about the lymphatic system, about the digestive system, about how to truly get rid of yeast and leaky gut and um, uh, and how the body works as an ecosystem. So it's great. Uh, it'll be That's a great excellent. companion to my my online course and um, and just for everyone, no matter if they're a vet or if they're just a person trying to help their dogs, just learning how to use herbs uh, according to herbal herbal language. Because right now they're being used according to allopathic practices that we've been conditioned for. Yeah. So, um, and then I have a private Facebook group called Dogs or Individuals. Um, awesome. I have a business page. I got an Instagram page. That's all really I have. That's that's all. That's all. That's what I got. Rita, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, and I know Wendy is currently um in Wendy, which which facet of Rita's universe are you in right now? Because I can't um I'm in all facets of Rita's <laughs> universe right now. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> I do um I do the monthly program. I'm in the energetics class. I'm gonna be in the herbal class. Uh I'm I'm a bit obsessed, I would say. Well, in our monthly program this month, I will tell you it is worth six grand. Uh, because okay. I'm sharing my CCL tear CCL. Call, yeah. and um and that's worth about six grand. So wow. Ten dollars a month, six grand. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate, she gives um, great advice. Yes, yes, absolutely. Rita, when I was um on the free I'm going to call it a masterclass that you gave about the respiratory illness. Um, when you talked about like how often dogs should poop, people's minds were, I mean, were blown and, and they were like, what do you mean? My dog has to poop more than, you know, once a day, like my dog only poops once a day. And it's like, well, that might be part of your problem. <laughs> they need to poop more than once a day. Yeah. They that's awesome. Twice a day. So yeah, they definitely need to poop. More than once. Now, is there a dog out there that pooping once a day is normal? Sure. I mean, I'm not going to say, I, I can't say that, but definitely when you uh, start pooping more, um, things start to move. Like yeah. your toxins are get out. They need to get out. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Our, our toxins just need to pee and poo. They need to get out. Or, and I'll tell you when you have skin issues, that is the liver pushing out to the skin because the pooper and the peeper is not working correctly. Yeah. And, and if you've asked ever asked anybody who's had it, like themselves, any sort of chronic illness, um, you will appreciate how the body needs to work, right. Yep. Versus how it might not be working. Right. That's, that's a very absolutely. real thing. Yes, absolutely. It, it just needs to, it, it needs to work better in it. And pooping is, you know, everyone poops. I hate to say it. It's just like the book. <laughs> Dirty subject, but everyone <laughs> has to do it. All right. Uh, one last question before we let you go. Kate asks, do you work with humans? I do. I do. And I, I assume they can also get a hold of you through the website. Your, your many websites. They can get a hold of me through the canineherbalist.com. Uh, website canine Excellent. herbalist yeah and it's not a quick process it's i i only take a few humans every month and i you know i'm booked out probably till the end of june for that good for you yeah good for you gotta keep um, your down ladies <laughs> well and i also just appreciate you know how much education you do and obviously you know giving of your time tonight to come on and share with us is like really valuable but but noting that we need people like you to educate the next generation of herbalists and holistic practitioners, whatever that looks like. So um, I also just want to thank you for that because um, knowledge is power, but it also has to be passed on, right? It is it is yeah, not osmosis. It does, and uh, I try to do as many of these things as possible. You know, when people ask me to be on, I say yes. I can tell you, and it is no disrespect, but if you email me questions about your dog, I will not answer them. And please just understand, I get like a hundred emails sure. a day. I have sure. a full time assistant 
just to deal with my emails. So, um, yeah, uh, I, the best way to get a hold of me is, um, to listen to these wonderful people. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I, I do a lot of these things. I, and I speak and I, I do that kind of stuff. That's all like, you know, this is free information, but, um, I give a lot of free information, a lot of free time uh, of my time. Um, but when you email me, uh, I do not give free information out. It, it, some people get confused. Like, I don't understand, but just multiply yourself by right. about 200 people. And I'd have to quit my job and, <laughs> um, and just answer free questions. So the best way to do it is to join my subscription group from canineherbalism.com. The dogs are individuals, or I can be found in my private Facebook group. Uh, I answer questions every now and then, but I have some really great herbalists in there. I have some vets in there. I have some really great people in there that answer questions for me uh, that have been working with me for a really long time. So you can do that um, or use the Ask the Herbalist. Awesome. And last question from us, which is, um, I know we're going to see you at least one or two different conferences that we're attending, but do you want to um, tell folks kind of what your your conference schedule is for this year? Um. Uh, it's called Dogs or Individuals is my page, Facebook page, um, or Canine Herbalist, either one. Um, I am going to be uh, in Albany, uh, New York. We'll see um, you there. I, what What is that the called? The, the Healthy Dog the Expo. Dog Expo. The Healthy Dog yep. Expo. And I'm doing yep. a workshop there as well. Awesome. Uh, and then I'm going to Europe. I'll be in Ireland, Scotland, and England. I'm taking Dr. a little Brady. In Denmark, I'm taking a break in Denmark and Norway, and then I'll be back in England to speak. And then um, I am speaking at, uh, so that's June. In June, I'm speaking in Portland and Seattle in uh, June, July. July, if, oh, July, I'll be in, uh, I'm not speaking, but I will be at the Nautical Dog event, yeah. uh, hanging out with uh, some of my peeps. Yeah, we'll see you um, there. Yeah, so I'll be a participant there, hanging out with uh, some of my favorite, uh, like Katie Woodley speaking, and I want to see Katie and uh, two crazy cat ladies, Jay and Adrian, love them, hanging out with them. So I'm going there to have a little fun. And then um, I think I'm going to speak there locally with the BK Pets, though. Okay. Uh, somewhere there. And then um, that's uh, July. And then August. You're at Judy's I, conference, right? I'm going to be at Judy's concert. That's in October. October. Yeah. I pretty sure I'm going to be at the real feed reel. I've got Great. a busy year. Uh, yeah. feed reel. and then I'm going to be at, uh, the BK pets. Uh, they're having something in September in Chicago. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, on that note, it sounds like you should get some rest. <laughs> right. Got- I get a lot of rest. I don't work past that. I, I don't work past six. I Good. hardly ever work past five. I don't start my day until like eight. So Good for you. I get a lot of rest and I hardly ever work weekends unless I've got a course coming out, which I do. So I'm working this weekend, but I'm getting ready to go to Europe. So I have to work a little bit in order to have fun. Good for you. Well, Rita, um, on behalf of Wendy and myself and the entire folks here tonight, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. And everyone is sign, go up to her website to sign up for the book when it comes out and take her classes and join all the things. And, and listen to the podcast. Yes. And, right. and if you're on our email list, which since you signed up for this class, you are every month, we send out a newsletter with links. And actually for the February newsletter, we links to your uh, podcast about my talkie mushrooms. So yes, thank you. Um, because mushrooms are magical and super medicinal. And especially when it comes to cancer, we didn't even talk about that, but that's because in two we weeks, we can talk about mushrooms later well in two weeks your friend and ours uh angel arlino will be talking about hemp and mushrooms so excellent we're covering the whole gamut so yes so thank you again so much everyone have a great evening be sure to check out our other classes that are coming up and thanks so much everyone Bye, Rita. thank you, thank you so much thank take you care. take care bye-bye okay bye-bye bye